Good morning, soon to be afternoon, Thursday the 6th of January. Noonday movement snack, heading your way. Uh, Pouffet's fe feature again today. <clears throat> Not actively, I'm just, I'm just sat on one. But it's one of those uh, ones that kind of moves and gets lower over time <laughs> as, I, as I shift my weight. So uh, there you go, that's uh, Pouffet action. Uh, noonday, uh, waiting for live libos to arrive, continuing the theme of uh, moving parts and supporting parts that support, assist, help with are required for getting down uh, and up from floor or getting up and down from, from lower levels. It might not be the floor, it might be a buffet. It might be a, a lower sofa or a, just a, a lower a lower level. So, um, and I'll say this again as people arrive. They won't all be for everyone. These moves. So have a have a look, have a look at it and go. Do I want to have a go at that one? Where am I with that? And there are you know progressions and options for sit and stand. Uh, hello, Kathy and Carolyn and Miss P and Ken. I got my notes back. The, the cat has a, I've, I've got my phone balanced on the panettone. <laughs> uh, so I didn't move it, which is kind of like a, you know, it's like a big, it's a big, it's a big C-A-K, isn't it? In a box ready to go to someone for, for Christmas who we haven't seen yet. So um, the, the cat is here and has released my notes. Um, uh, that's great to hear, Karen. Thank you very much. Uh, the the noonday theme this week seems to be going down very well. We we mention it and allude to it a lot. This this these series of moves that get us down and up to lower levels. Everything in today, um, all this week significantly contributes to to the ease of that that movement pattern it's like lots of series of moves and moving parts that get us to lower and higher places so uh thank you carolyn for saying and everyone else who's mentioned this week i know um Linny over in the usa has uh, has also uh, made quite a lot of comments this week and uh, said how useful they are so thank you for that folks <clears throat> we do love to hear how you find this 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 stuff uh, Sandra's been to pump. How's your partridge in a pear tree, Sandra? I think if we were to give out awards for last night's Zoom, I, th I think you'd be in the nominations, Sandra. A, for taking control and leadership to organise the movement snacking. I was going to say choir, but then I changed my mind. <laughs> and Sue as well. Sue was there. Um, so you can get an award for wandering to fi find a musical instrument. Um, you know, everyone's a winner. Uh, I was, what was I last night? I was uh, seven swans a swanning, but I changed it to ugly duckling. I thought that was more me. Catastrophe of, too funny. You're all too funny and clever for me. Uh, and thank you CK for your funny pun as well about the cat chup. She was on Cat Chup today. If you don't know what we're talking about, my pre-message today posted my cat sat on my uh, my movement smacking notes. Oh crikey, snow falling in Bolton. Uh, this indicates, grab one folks, tea towel-ish, some, something reliably tuggable. Grab one of those. And also today, I will do a free to one in any minute now, sorry. Uh, hello Maddie and hello Pat. As you can see, I've come up into the lounge and I'm going to be kind of working from the sofa today. Now, you may not be near a sofa, so don't go dashing around changing your devices. Maybe when I get to the sofa stuff, just have a look, park it, park it, park it in your memory for, for later. So because of the theme of this week, you might not be in the best possible space to participate, so it might be that you just have a look, maybe pick up on one of the moves that uh, that I've done previous, 
uh, and just kind of have a look and, and crowbar them into your day as you see fit. That's what these movement snacks are all about. So without further ado, three, two, one. Good afternoon, Bex Turner from Later Life Training. Noonday movement snack on the theme of getting up and down from floor, but all of these moves that involve wrists and shoulders and legs and coordination contribute to pretty much every every activity you're in anyway. So hello, Gillian with a G. Hello, Sue. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm on a buffet, uh, and we're going to talk a lot today as well about standing up from lower levels. So uh, that's uh, another, another buffet move in the mix. So circulation booster start. Um, because I'm here in the lounge, this is my external support, this wall here. Um, if you know you need external support, be near a table or a fixed or firm piece of furniture, this, this is my support here. So standing prompts, uh, support if you need, even weight, up a bit taller, get going, isn't it? Get, get going on the get go. So you might want to continue to keep your fingertips on support. You might be confident to come away from that. The support may be in front of you or even to the sides of you. Ankles, feet and toes on the go, bring in upper limb as and when you're ready. Uh, and don't forget, you may go for the wandering cert boost option. You might want to have a wander around, have a, have a march around and, and come back in about a minute. Maintain that activity, lift uh, and support through the trunk and focus even more, folks, this week on the, the backward uh, range of motion for the upper limb march. Or you might want to fix up lower limbs and then just separate upper and lower. Continue the standing prompts. Now, the seated prompts, I'm using the sofa today, as you can see, considerably lower than the usual knee height chair that we would suggest, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Uh, generally speaking, sofas tend to be lower than chairs and therefore are more difficult to get up from, but are also a great tool for extra leg strength and power. For now, have a hip walk forward from your chair position. Uh, activate from the middle. It's even harder to come out of C-shaped slump in a sofa because it's so squishy. As you can see, my hips are lower than my knees. This is why it's harder to stand out of sofa. So single or double arms, whichever you prefer. Because of the lowness, a seated march in this position is going to be a bit of a squash for me. Even more reason to really use the feet to do this. So I'm using, I'm using my feet to, to kind of get the cert boost activity as opposed to lifting the hips. My, uh, my, my hips are too low to comfortably do that. So my seated march today are just going to be here from the heels. Then I'm not so squished. If you're in a comfortable chair of knee height, then go for, go for the low lift as well. Mix up arms and, arms and legs or keep them as separate. If, like me, you are in something low, what you will be able to do more successfully is get a few extensions in there to lengthen the leg and you, you'll get a more range of motion around the hips. So you might want to crowbar in some extra ones of those. Okay, that's the cert boost done. What's first on my list today? Okay, because uh, when we're talking about getting down or up from the floor, that is going to involve uh, hands, wrists. If it involves hands and wrists, it's going to involve shoulders and you pushing your body weight. So in preparation for that, remain in sit if you would like. I'm going to push up to stand. Uh, let's put in a few extra shoulder rolls just to get shoulder blades ready. Uh, and I'm going to repeat some, some low open arm reaches from yesterday. So elbows are low, slight bend, and you're going to reach and aim for your own fingertips across. So you're bringing in some trunk turns, some shoulder ranges of motion, open arms and across the body. You're going to need to be able to manoeuvre arms to, uh, to get up from lower levels. So there, there's uh, some extra mobility. Try and to 
reach your own fingertips. Just a few of those. We don't over egg anything here in the movement snack. Finding full ranges of motion just to get body parts moving. And some wrists. So you might want to take uh, alternating hand clasps there so you've got some extra wrist movements plus a bit of uh, hand, hand open and clasp. So take some changes there. And then just some steady wrist moves, could be side to side like so, could be up and down like so, or it could be hands together. Getting that angle of, of wrist here, if you think about if you're pushing up from the bath, pushing up from a chair, pushing over from bed, pushing up from the floor, you're either going to be in this kind of position, alternatively you may be in a, in a fist position, we're going to come on to that in a moment. So a little bit of preparation for shoulders, arms, and wrists. Next one, I'm going to go for standing one, stand operas. Are you near a chair? Are you near a chair? Are you by a sofa? Uh, we're going to crowbar in some sit to stands. If your chair is at a lower level, this will immediately add extra load to that sit to stand because because you're going through a greater distance. So maybe crowbar in some sit to stands from the chair or sofa that you are in, or jockey lifts. Or if you don't have a chair or a sofa near you, take up some external support, take your hip hinge and a, a little bit of a knee bend, kind of just as if to above chair height. You might want to bring this support with you as you do that. You definitely need some oomph and some power and some strength in legs to be able to push up from lower levels. We talk about sit to stands and jockey lifts a lot, so crowbar a few of those in now in preparation for the next bit. Okie dokes. The next one I'm going to show you is a seated one and it's moving around and adjusting around out of a sofa. So if you haven't got a sofa near to you, maybe crowbar an extra surf boost or some extra shoulder mobility. So this one, so sofa bumps, I think we have done this one before. And this is where we're going to utilise, we're going to utilise a strong upright trunk and the hands and the wrists in the way I've just said and some weight shift. So, this best done on a sofa because you've got, a, you've got more length to play with. So you've got to bump across, bump across the sofa here. So you've got weight shift. Most importantly, you're gradually starting to get, coming back the other way, some load and some body weight through the hands. Now, certainly my sofa here, it can feel a bit a bit more comfortable and, and kinder than rehearsing this, you know, directly to the floor because you've got a different change of angle. You can wrap your fingers around around the edge of the sofa, but we can just get get the wrists, hands, body, trunk ready for taking up body weight through the arms and hands. Not loads and loads, just just a few, just a couple of uh, body bumps, as I've called them, left to right and then stop. So we don't want to over egg or do too much of this stuff, but little bits frequently and often. Now, standing option, if you're not near a sofa, I think I did have one here, actually. So stand, stand up as if you would like. I'm going to suggest you rehearse knee bends with a side turn. So you're going to go press, turn, bend. Press, turn. So it's, a, it's a, a, a trunk turn and a knee bend and a press. So you're getting knees in a forward direction but trunk in a side direction. There. And these uh, directly relate to certainly lying positions for the trunk but also um, getting up from sofas, shifting around. You could do this in a in a seated position to get hands again, alternating left to right. So we need moving trunks, strong hands and wrists, and mobile hips. 
Okay, let's um, give wrists and hands uh, a bit of a rest. And now grab tea towels. Sit or stand this one, exactly the same. I'm going to come up to stand so you can come a bit closer. So we're going to take our over the shoulder with one, retrieve it with the other, do a little bit of ease, ease and movement of both, and then bring it round and take it over the other shoulder. So uh, it's kind of like dry, drying your back with a towel. Uh, you've got a bit of a grip in either hand and you've got an e you're finding your range of motion through shoulders and elbows and hands. We do this movement uh, quite a lot in the movement snacks, but we need this one also. And I've mentioned this a lot this week. If we are pushing up from floor or maybe uh, kind of bum walking on the floor, our arms are going to be behind us. We're going to be here. So we need to be comfortable with this range of motion, being able to get hands behind to maneuver and shift. So um, that's what that one's all about. If you haven't got a tea towel, just go for your your more common wise, not loads and loads, four or five, have recoveries and frequent rests in between. How are we doing? Next one. Okay. Controlled knee bends. Now I did this one yesterday uh, on my buffet in the kitchen. And uh, this one requires knee bending. So in stand, take up some extra support. If you're going to manoeuvre more comfortably and effectively around on the floor, you're really going to need your knees to bend for you. So it might be that this is your start point. Set up the foot and then control and feel that bend and return. Moving slowly. And just note here that foot goes back and when I bend up there, my knee stays to the floor. So we're looking to do the opposite to bring the knees forward. Or actually want to ease the heel up. And it might be that yours is just there. If that's your comfortable point, go for that. Change sides here. There's the other leg. Pick it up and there. So explore your knee bend. Explore your knee bend. You're gonna feel this in the back of the muscles on the back of your thighs. Once you're comfortable with that, you can turn to face your sofa or your chair. Uh, as you can see, I've got a wall all around me here. So if you, if you use your strong trunk and your hip hinge as well, there's some options. Have, have a look and then decide which are best for you. So I can take a knee, a knee here, Did you see? So I'm using balanced positions of hands and, and knees. And this is probably going to be um, one of the movements, one of the, the positions you're going to be in to get up from floor or even get out of the bath. Uh, how many of you flip over onto your front to get out of your bath that way? How many of you push up that way? It's exactly the same. There's only so many ways you can do this. So with the sofa, and if you've got lots of support around you, every now and then, just crowbar in some kneeling. Or single legs, if you're not quite com confident to go down to all fours, we can work it here. I've got my shoes on, so I'm, ideally I'd take my shoes off. So I'm not gonna put my shoes on the sofa, that would be, that would be rude, wouldn't it? So I'm going to dangle over the end a bit, but you get the gist. So there you can start to take the weight and then push up again. What you're also getting here is extra work from that leg, controlling there and there. So um, I talked yesterday about having the, the, the load across shins. We're not right on the knee. We're using the whole of the front of the lower leg to support that. What you will also need for that is extendable feet, extendable feet. 
Um, so the sofa, the sofa move can help. Doesn't require such a lot of feet to look. Um, so it can be a really great progression to feeling confident on your knees. Okay, to finish then, to finish, to finish, to finish, I'm going to go for tea towel again. Some options here. In sit, uh, either taking a tea towel behind and then taking a press down. Um, what you can't see here is I'm pressing down and then my, my hands, my fists if you like, are also doing an extra push into the sofa. You can't quite see that here, maybe on the side. So I'm, I'm coming from here, I'm pushing down and then down a little bit more. So it's up to you how far you want to go. You might want to stop when you get hands to sofa or because it's squishy, you can start to explore how your fist feels pushing into the sofa. Now, if you are gonna play around with this one, uh, the, wrist is fir uh, the wrist is firm, it doesn't move. So it's really firm and strong around here. So you could, you could just start doing some, some fist padding either side here. And then bit by bit, you can start to add some extras in there. Crowbarring in here, folks. Again, there's, there's easier ways. There's always ways to build up differently. If you put cushions either side of you, now you might have something more, more to grab. So there you've got more range of motion to play with. And you can go flat hands, or you can go fists, whichever you prefer. And it might be that your legs are in the mix as well. So hopefully you can see we need pushy, downy, wristy hands, legs working together, uh, four points of contact if you're on knees and hands. We need arms to be behind us comfortably. So these are all the moves that are gonna to contribute to supporting you prepare to get down and up from the floor. Uh, do you want a quick recap? Here's the recap we did. Hand and wrist movements, mobilities to get them ready. We crowbarred in some reaching across, getting trunks, aiming to reach for your own fingertips, getting your supporting parts feeling stronger. Sit to stand if that's right for you, and if that can be off something slightly lower with a bit of extra zap on the way up. That extra zap, that hip hinge and that drive up, it's going to really help support strength and power for getting up from lower levels. Um, seated options are the jockey lifts, if you would like. Uh, and then we did across the sofa bumps, bumps, which went uh, fists and flat hands, little sideways, crabby sideways shifts. And this is you learning how to use arms, trunk positions and hips to manoeuvre and shift, so maybe crowbarring some of those. Then, 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 we gave the wrists a rest and went over the back, did a little bit of a shoulder move and then came back again. There, there, there. Then we did some controlled uh, knee bends and, and placement onto sofa. A couple of ways you can do this, use some support. We did uh, either a single, lower and control up like so. Keep it moving, don't stay down there too long. Keep it moving. Or facing sofa, knee bend, hand, hand, using sofa, knee, knee, off, off. Those types of things. That hip hinge that we always talk about features greatly in this. Then uh, we finished with um, some back tea towel presses. If you're in stand, it could be here, a little bit of a tug away, pressing down here. Or if you're in the sofa, you can add an extra squeeze through. Okay, yes. After all that, you might want to crowbar in a chest stretch or an upper back stretch or a bet tug, something like that. 
Uh, you might want to crowbar in a little bit of a back of thigh stretch. So all the stuff we do in 4 p.m. Alrighty, that's uh, that's that. Staying on that theme, the most important, I mean, you're all going to be at different uh, places to progress for this. So just pick one thing. It might take a while to get it ready, to, to prepare it, to prepare that moving part. But we've got to start somewhere. And sofas uh, and, and beds and comfortable lower level seating can really help to build confidence and help you understand and manage our arms and legs and trunks work together vital 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 skill um to, to to keep in our toolbox of life anyway there you go toolbox of life how about that i will cows will be with you at four for more sway and stretch uh i don't know you might have myself all day tomorrow morning it depends if he's got uh depends if he's got the uh, the signals in the in the ether for uh, for the 8 a.m but rest assured one of us will be here uh, and I'll see you back tomorrow for, for, for Friday, more Friday moves. All right, bye for now, folks. And, and do let us know as well if, if these moves this week particularly are of interest and uh, a bit of help. Um, you know, we love to hear your comments and, and how this stuff is going for you. Uh, four hours, round of Kelsey's, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.